This is Stocky Mickwell, ex-professional footballer who wanted nothing more than to live out his days on the golf course. So in this playthrough we're going to help Stocky fulfil that dream by equipping him with the survival skills and the resources that he'll need to lock down the country club and golf course and turn it into a safe and self-sustaining base so that Stocky can live happily ever after. How long is that going to take? Can we even make Stocky's dream come true? Let's find out. While Stocky picks up a few things from his starter home, let's take a quick look at his skills and traits. Now, the Premier League wasn't as lucrative in the early 90s as it is now, so Stocky had to rely on his trade skills to make a living stateside after hanging up his boots. If you want to have a look at his other attributes, then here they are. Otherwise, let's join Stocky. Okay, we don't have anything that looks like we can use as a weapon. All right, we've got food. Probably enough for a day or two, at least. We're going to have to get out and find a weapon because we do not have anything in here that we can use to bash zombies on the head with. But the longer we go without a weapon, the harder it's going to be to clear this shit out. Come on, go down. Yes, okay. Let's stand on this guy and then push this one over. Dead. Now, can we do this? No. I can never get the timing right on that. Dead. No. Fucked it. So we spend the rest of the morning clearing out the front yard or heading in for our midday TV shows. And then after lunch, we went to see if our neighbors had any weapons that we could use. Oh no, look at that. We've got a hammer, an ax. The garden hoe, I think, is quite good, unless I'm misremembering something here. Oh my god, get You are shitting me. Let's just get out here, get some distance. Oh, there's another zombie. Alright, let's see if we can quickly equip this thing. Oh, come on, bitches. <laughs> Literally the first time I've ever used a katana. Alright, we've got two of these hand axes. I think we'll give those a go just for our just for our everyday killing. Oh, was this? This is a boarded up house. This is a survivor house. I didn't realize. No wonder they've got some good shit. So with a katana on our back as a good backup, if things get out of hand, we continued on with the neighborhood clear out. behind oh look at that screw driver saw first aid kit oh this is a good day uh oh we're getting anxious we need some cigarettes okay here's what we're going to do head back catch some TV and then we'll see if we can go clear that house out overnight or before nightfall. Hang on a minute, is this Courtman Medical? Oh, no way, no way, no way, all right. Suddenly, the game takes a turn. If we can make our way into Courtman Medical, this early on, that would be an absolute boon. Right, we've got two in the garden. I think we can do this. Oh, there's two car keys there. I don't know what car they're for. 
the Masterton. Is it one of those two, those crashed ones? Let's not mess around, we can have a look at that in a minute, maybe in the morning. We want to get in here and secure this place. Clear. Clear. And clear. Office clear. Okay, just the apartment upstairs. And we have, may have found our home for the next few days at least. Okay, zombie. Just one. Bedroom clear. Bathroom clear. All right, this is a good start, guys. We will close the curtains. I'm gonna have to take this corpse downstairs so I don't get sick. And let's have a little looky around the, the apartment. All right, a little bit of food. And again, just some general stuff. All right, well, I think we'll have a little wash, hunker down for the night. And then tomorrow morning, I think there's like a little mini mart just over next to the Courtman Medical, so we can go and make that our first port of call in the morning. Oh shit. Oh, we've got a bit of a <laughs> situation. Uh, it might be time for the katana. Okay, the katana is pretty, pretty good. It's that little mini market over here. Maybe we'll get some ciggies in there. Yeah, shit, we need to get this fresh produce off the shelf and into our fridge at home. And we should be good for days if we do that. Okay, there's one zombie inside that I can see. All right, the back door's open. Seen us? Yes, there he is. I think that was the only one. Yes, okay. No cigarettes. That is a shame. Okay, that's the fresh food taken care of. Heaps of ice cream. Okay, now. Okay, good haul. Let's drop it off back home and see if we can. Well, I mean, we know it's there. We don't really need to come and collect all that canned stuff. Oh, look at this. Stocky Mickwell is a little bit sad, feeling sorry for himself. But one of the things I did see in the freezer over here was some ice cream. So that should go some way to relieving his mood. Get that down, your stocky son. really need some cigarettes because this nervous wreck situation is not going to be good for our zombie killing abilities. Oh, this car's bloody locked. Oh no. Uh, okay, that's not good. We need to be not near that amount of sound. <laughs> and actually, what am I thinking? Let's wear this leather jacket. We're walking around in shorts and t-shirt. We need something with a little bit more protection. I think we're good in this direction. Let's go and see the damage and how much of a write-off this whole area is over here now. There's, all right, what's that, five? Oh, there's one behind us, the doctor. Where have you been all this time? What up, doc? Suit pants, apparently they have scratch defense. We'll wear, <laughs> we'll wear them. Oh no, 
That is not good. Now, if they just want to keep coming over one by one, by all means, feel free, guys. Oh, look at this. We're getting tired. Okay. Let's pop back, watch telly, and then head out and see if we can clear that area. I'm tempted to just go for it. We've got this katana on day one. Let's just treat it as a bonus, something we should never have had. So if we end up destroying it too soon, then so be it. Stick, we'll have that. Time to go check the back of this van now. Gonna have to do it the old fashioned way. Uh, oh, cigarettes, yes, okay, done. All right, let's get out of here. I did pick up two car keys from a zombie yesterday. I'm wondering if these two cars over here are anything to do with that. Oh look, I do have a car key. Oh, I didn't actually think to <laughs> start the engine. I was just checking for cigarettes and lighters. Nah, out of gas. Yeah, this one's fucked as well. I decided at this point to start clearing out these nearby houses to continue making the area a little safer and to try and find a lighter so we can have a smoke and calm the nerves a bit. Oh shit. There's a few zombies in this house. Perfect. Right, let's stick that on. Oh, that feels good. We found ourselves a lovely little pipe wrench in this house. From here we carried on with the neighbourhood clear out over the road. Started to get a bit out of hand so we got the katana out again. up here. Oh, a nice duffel bag. We've got a hiking bag, but it's always good to have another. All right, I think Stocky's had about enough for today, so he's just going to get back, rest up, watch some TV, maybe read a good book or two to stop being a sad little munchkin. Come on, one last zombie for the day.
Alrighty, check this out. I've logged off and on again since last night because I thought that I'd installed and activated the mod that's going to allow me to smoke cigarettes and light them from stovetops and campfires and that kind of thing because that only makes sense, right? That's one of my pet peeves of the vanilla game. So now we can actually smoke a cigarette by lighting it on the stove. Okay, here's what I'm thinking. I'm going to start heading west because there is a large warehouse over in that direction and that's going to hold a bunch of useful stuff for us on our journey that we can use later. So I'm going to go over there, see, I mean, it might take a day or two to clear a path. <laughs> Hopefully there's no helicopter shenanigans that's going to screw us over, but we can start making our way over and doing what we can to clear this place out and give us a free run at the warehouse before the zombies get too populous. Okay, I think that's the warehouse, is it? All the storage units? Okay, I can see a few zombies we're gonna to need to clear out. This might be one last hurrah for the katana before it eventually dies, which is inevitable. And apparently it's unrepairable. Nice. Okay, it doesn't look great, but we're going to wear a hard hat. I think the place is empty. Oh, check it out. All right, let's have a little look around, shall we? Oh, unbelievable. Empty of zombies and of loot. Okay, a lighter. All right, we'll see in these two in the corner. A battery. Oh, we'll take it. You never know. And some strawberry seeds. Well, it's a bit of a bust so far. Let's get out of here. There's a few storage containers just down here. So we're gonna have a look. I'm not sure how many we can get into though because we might need a sledgehammer. Okay, are any of these gonna be open? No, damn it. I can disassemble the door with my carpentry skills. Let's give that a shot. These guys can't get me because... Oh shit, those guys can. There's somebody home. Oh, and a generator. This is very tiring carrying this heavy old thing, so I'm going to put this somewhere that I can see it as I'm driving past, in case I forget where it is. But hopefully that shouldn't be a problem if I've got my head about me. All right, well, that was a pretty good day. Getting tired. We are moderately exhausted. So I think this is a good point to probably head home. See if we can get back in time for our six o'clock TV shows and we'll just hang out and do a bit of cooking, a bit of reading, and a bit of leveling up. And then when we've got a car, we can come back and get that generator. All right, while we're coming past here anyway, why don't we just hoard a few more bits of food? And by food, I mean candies. <laughs> we spent most of day five working towards clearing a path to the highway where we would hopefully find a car with a key. 
Before we made it that far, someone must have been looking down on Stocky because we found a keyed up van in the church car park. But not before we mashed up a few more Zeds. Unfortunately, the tank was empty and pretty beat up, but even still, this could be a very, very valuable asset. This van's put us in a good mood now. Let's fuck some more zombies up. On day six, Stocky continued clearing up the local area, raiding a few of the local houses and trying to avoid jump scares. In this shed, he found a bunch of useful tools. And here, check it out, a new crowbar. Our nightstick is taking a lot of heavy damage, so they'll come in very useful as a replacement. Day seven, we made it to the end of this street with all the nice houses and found our second generator in this shed. So rather than try to do anything with it right now, we're just gonna leave it in the street so we can come back and pick it up later on. But on day eight, we decided to start checking a few cars for gas and found this one just behind Courtman. And so we were just on our way over to Big Bertha, our lovely new van, and something quite unbelievable happened. Oh, is that Jason? Oh, he's got a machete, oh my God. Try telling me that Stocky Mickwell isn't a kick ass looking motherfucker right now. Anyway, that's enough messing around. Let's get this gas into our van. Alright, I don't know how long this van is going to take to get started, so we can't be messing around. We're going to have to kill these guys first. This thing is so sweet. I wonder if I'll ever see one again. Okay, I think that was all of them. So can we fill this thing up now? Okay, this is it, the moment of truth. I know the engine's not in tip-top condition, but we got it started. Oh, it's loud. It's very loud. Okay, let's get this home. Stick it in the driveway of Courtman Medical. Oh my god, this is not running well. And so, as Stocky carefully piloted this beat up old van back to Courtman Medical, he knew it was more than just a set of wheels. This van is a glimmer of hope in this forsaken world. These four wheels could take Stocky one step closer to making it all the way out to the country club. Stocky began day nine out on the scrounge for fuel, but that was quickly cut short when he heard a chopper overhead. Unsure of its intentions, he ducked for cover in the nearest house, so not to be spotted. The house's current occupant was not too happy about that, but tough shit. Somebody's trying to get in the window. Uh oh, they're in. Somebody 
at the fucking back door. Unbelievable. Just gotta wait for that helicopter to go. Don't wanna let anybody know that I'm here. There's a lot of zombie movement happening outside and I can't see what's going on. Oh, somebody's going that way over there. All right. The helicopter is off to my left. Oh, who's this? Somebody coming in. Fuck you. It's too many. I don't like it. What the hell is he wearing? Ghillie suit or something? Alright, I'm going to have to go. I can't hear the helicopter anymore. Turns out the fear of the unknown was actually worse than the reality. Zombies weren't as numerous as Stocky first thought, and he thanked his past self for taking the time to clear the neighbourhood in the week prior. However, as Stocky approached home base, he noticed a problem. Hang on, there's somebody inside. Oh, they've bloody... Oh, they're all over the place. They're all in my base. Let's get them out. Ah, shit. Open the door. Fuck. Okay, katana time. Okay, we've got a window to fix. And with that, base secured. Stocky was going to need plenty of building tools and supplies if he is to secure the country club. So he spent day 10 over at the nearby storage facility to see what he could find. juice would be worth the squeeze until we found the Holy Grail. This fishing rod might be very useful later on as well when Stocky has to fend for himself. Other than that though there wasn't a massive amount here so Stocky called it a day and headed home to relax and chill for the night. Stocky's last day in Muldra was spent making some final preparations for tomorrow's journey. First, he loaded the generator into the van. And then he headed towards the highway to see if he could find some cars to siphon some gas from. Unfortunately, they were pretty heavily guarded and mostly empty. So the time has come to leave Muldra and take the long journey across the map to the country club. Hold up. We have some potential resources here. I'm looking for an axe. This dude's got at least one crowbar on him, which is awesome. Yes, all right, let's have a look. Pocket the crowbar, thank you very much. Please give me an ax. No, just a screwdriver and a wheel. All right, well, still worth it for the crowbar. So, on we go. All right, here we go. This is the fence 
we were looking for. So just the other side, we should see some houses. Yes, here we go. So let's try and stop in a little bit of a clearing. We can shut the engine off, get out, and we're just gonna have to start clearing up. Let's go. Come on, stocky. Do we even wanna do this? Or do we just jump over? We're gonna have to, I don't know, I feel like we should clear it out. Or is that unnecessary, is it? Is it safe over this fence here? I'm gonna say it's more safe over the fence and we'll come back and get the car later. Let's go, here we are. Yeah, this is gonna be much easier to, uh, oh, there's, there's a bunch over there. Okay, we are tired. Let's take a seat and then we have to get in there. Sit on the ground, get a bit of rest. Just need to get rid of this exertion. Then we can try and get in the house. Oh, there's three in there. Don't smash the window, you dick. Shit. Not good that the back door's fucked. Might be able to put something in front of it. Can we move a fridge or something? I feel like that might work. Garage is clear. Oh, got some decent tools in here, look at this. Nice. All right, we'll look at that properly in a minute. Okay, just the upstairs to clear. If they didn't hear all that commotion going on downstairs, then I don't know what's going on. Okay, clear. 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 Clear in the master bedroom. Is there a ensuite or something? What's this? Oh, it must be a mirror. There we go. Okay. The house is clear. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to try and find some clothes to rip up turn into a sheet rope and then we're going to stick it out of that window in the ensuite so that if we go to sleep in here we've got at least one door protection if we hear banging on the door at night we go out of the window we have an escape <laughs> i don't know if that works but we're doing it and just to be extra safe On day 13, Stocky started to clear out the houses in this little housing estate next to the golf course for two reasons. One, to make the area a safe place to hang out for a while. And two, to see what useful shit we could find. Oh, so much stuff. All right, we are definitely coming back to these houses to do a proper loot once we've cleared them out. Nightstick, sweet. I'll just put the uh, nightstick in the road. All right, we've got a few to clean up here. two we've had just from the first few houses and with the house cleared stocky moved on to the next door neighbors okay we need a rest before we go back in that house Oh, 
baseball bat. At this point in the afternoon, Stocky grabbed a bin bag to go back and collect some of the loot he left behind in the cleared houses, and then he went and settled in for the night, ready to do it all over again on day 14. And to say that Stocky got lucky on day 14 would be an understatement. However, the first order of the day was to go grab the van and bring it round to the houses that we've been clearing out. Come on, please start. Yes, all right, let's get out of here. home sweet home for the next few days. The only immediate problem being that the sound of the engine has attracted a bunch more zombies for Stocky to kill. Okay, what's going on over there? on this north side of the block. Ooh, survivor house. This one's boarded up. Oh, and he's got a big backpack. Look at that. Shit. Oh my god. Right, we are... We're in business. seen us let's bring them out pretty sure that's not all there is in here just waiting for them to all stream down the stairs how many's here one yes okay let's put the backpack on the floor before we lose it nice that other sound must be coming from upstairs let's have a look Yes, this door here. Alright, we are going to open it and run. Because I don't know how many it is, but looks like it's just one. Die, bitch. Okay, now. Clear. 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 Oh, this could be the best house. I would have got a garbage bag for doing some looting later. Let's pick that up now. This spiked baseball bat. Come on, garden hoe, fork. We have, we have hit the jackpot here. Oh my God. All right, we'll come and do a proper loot, but we just need to shut the door, get this place secured again. Oh, actually, let's go get that new backpack. Check this out, large backpack. So, pick it up. How does it compare? Capacity 27, encumbrance reduction 85. Compared to 22 and 80. Yeah, that is nice. All right, so let's whip that on our back. Pop that on the floor so we can get all the shit out. Pop all the shit in there. And at this point, Stocky took his old backpack and went and grabbed all the good loot from this house. This is going to be his new base of operation just while he works on taking down the country club. 
But before we think about doing that, we've just got a few more houses to clear, starting now. This pattern continued pretty much for the rest of day 15, which left day 16 for Stocky to do one final pass, make sure he's grabbed all the loot from all the houses and secured the area. And so having cleared the entire housing estate and grabbed all the best loot from all the buildings, Stocky grabbed the van and brought it back round to the survivor house which is going to be his home for the next few days while he plans his takedown of the country club. Sixteen days into the apocalypse and Stocky Mickwell has established a temporary base next to the golf course and he was ready to complete phase one of his retirement mission to clear the country club and make it his own. Day 17 was pretty uneventful for Stocky. He just spent the day sorting through his inventory and picking up a weapon for tomorrow. For some reason he had an uncanny abundance of baseball bats. So he grabbed the spiky one. Stocky's temporary base was right in front of the golf course so he spent day 18 starting to clear a path along the fairway and up to the clubhouse. Who knows what all these zombies were doing hiding in the woods. And finally our first look at Stocky's forever home. Nice air swing, mate. That's better. Stocky tested out this new spiked baseball bat that he found in one of the houses over on the estate. Feels like it had pretty good reach. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem to have lasted quite as long as the crowbars. ready for one of the greatest stitch-ups of all time. Why is there an alarm in the fucking toilets? Stocker was already getting pretty tired even though it was only half two in the afternoon so at this point he decided to call it, clear up a few zombies on the way back out and head home. Day 19 and it was time for Stocky to clear up the mess that the alarm in the bogs created. It was good in a way that the alarm had dragged all the zombies outside so we could fight them in a bit of a safer environment than indoors where we don't know who's coming up behind us. The only problem really is that all these zombies smashing through the windows had fucked his new joint up. Oh, that one was me. 
So just a quick check inside the toilets and the showers, just to make sure that's clear before we try to head inside for the first time. Oh shit. Stocky does tend to get a bit tired in the mid afternoon. So he took a moment to relax by the poolside before heading back in and mashing some zombies up. Yeah, it's probably getting too many to fight indoors. Let's bring them out. his first glimpse of the country club reception. Quite a nice little kill zone we've got here. Into day 20, Stocky decided to push on through and see if he could clear the club entrance. Still a lot of zombies hanging around outside near the fountain, but they were quite happy to just work their way through the building and enter Stocky's new kill zone by this window next to the fence. Okay, that's gonna be quite a lot to try and take on as they come piling through the window. Yep, especially when that happens. Okay, let's have a little lay down before we go push on through into the clubhouse. Very swanky lounge and a nice fire over there. Many a cosy night ahead for Stocky to be sure, with winter not too far away. Having secured the front of house, Stocky pushed deeper into the bowels of the country club. But not without a healthy level of paranoia at what could come up behind him at any moment. Cafe clear, kitchen clear, and so after a big day, Stocky decided to call it there, killing a couple of more zombies on the way out, and then headed home to recharge for another big day tomorrow. Because day 21 is when we're going to take the top floor. Turns out, it was pretty clear already. So without much to do upstairs, Stocky headed back outside and carried on cleaning up the area. And I don't know where this guy came from. I 
Okay, car park next. And let's see if we can have a little loot of a car or two, just for good measure. Nothing good in that one. Okay, that's happened. Have we cleared enough of the area that this is not going to be an issue? Okay, that's quite a lot. I wonder if we can just pop inside and grab something to make a Molotov out of from the bar. I don't want these guys to bust up my door though. Uh, oh no. Let's get out of the window. No, what are you doing, Stocky? Shit, gotta run. Exhausted, let's get over the fence to safety. Are they going to come round again? Yes. another one. And more, what are they all doing in my bloody lounge? That's going to be my happy place later. And this really was one mob of zombies too far for Stocky this day, so with a last little bit of energy he jumped over the fence and made a beeline for home to recover and recuperate in time for tomorrow where hopefully he can finish taking this place down. After a bit of a late start to the morning Stocky returned to find out just how much of a mess he'd left the car park in yesterday with that car alarm going off but first he had to actually make it to the car park and come to think of it who knows where these mobs are going to end up because they probably have started to wander already. It was at this moment that Stocky realised there were actually still quite a lot of zombies in the car park so he took a slow methodical approach to kiting them towards this set of trees which he hoped to, uh, to lose them in. So he could then circle back around and take them on in more manageable numbers. that guy with another large backpack which we will gratefully pick up all right this is it stocky time to man up and be a hero take out this last mob in the car park and then the place is going to be yours And 
So this is it. It appears to be clear. But it's getting late in the evening, so it's going to be a bit of a risk going inside to make sure. So let's head home for one last night in the temporary base before coming back here and making this our new forever home. Outside is clear. Let's do one final sweep inside just to make sure there's no stragglers found their way in. Oh, and wouldn't you know it. A few more zombies just to add to the impressive body pile in the corridor. Looking good, stocky. Nice work, nice work. And with that, Stocky began the long and tedious process of chopping trees, sawing logs, and boarding up the windows and doors with planks. This was going to be his first line of defense in the meantime, while he works on building up enough resources to build some proper fences and give ourselves some outside space with a bit of protection from wandering zombies. One thing that is at premium for the amount of construction that Stocky needs to do, and which is going to have to be the focus of one of his very next adventures, his nails because they are going to run out fast with the amount of walls that he needs to build and the amount of other carpentry that he's going to need to do but for right now he probably does have enough just to get some boards up on the windows and doors so he's going to spend the rest of the day doing that And so finally, seven days after first setting eyes on the clubhouse here, Stocky felt safe enough to spend his first night in his new home. But still, there's a long road ahead. Stocky's dream is to lock this place down entirely and turn it into a totally self-sustainable base forever so he can live out his dream of spending the rest of his days playing golf and eating barbecue. After the last stressful few days, Stocky was glad to just get to chopping trees down and boarding the windows up of his new home. Next on the agenda for today, given that we're going to be doing a lot of farming later, Stocky decided to make a couple of composters to dump all of the food that is inevitably going to be going off. And this little square of land here looks like a good place to set up a little farm, Stocky thought. So he started clearing all the bodies out from the area and then tore up a bunch of their clothes to make ropes and rags so that before too long he could be carrying these logs around and making log walls and tying them together with sheets. But this really is just the beginning of all that and Stocky was tired as fuck, so he went to bed. Next morning, Stocky started off by barricading a few more windows with some planks before heading over to whatever this building is over here. I think it must be just some kind of administration building because there doesn't really seem to be much in there. So after prying the door open, we had a quick look in the drawers, not much to report. The shelves had a few general supplies on them, but in this one cupboard, we did find a lovely new saw. Now the way that water works after the mains get cut off is that if you place a rain catching barrel directly above a sink and then plumb it in with a pipe wrench, then it will give you a working sink with fresh water. So the plan is to do that in this little outdoor kitchen just by the pool. So the first stage of that was to build some stairs to get up to the roof of this little building. But with so much stuff to think about and so much on the horizon, Stocky decided to just go for a long walk back to the house with all our stuff in and then load that stuff up into the van and bring it round to the country club. But anyway, by the time Stocky had loaded everything into the van, it was getting a bit late and he was tired. So he settled in for one last night in this house, just for old time's sake. Next morning, Stocky made the short drive back to the country club with all of his loot that he's been gathering over the past couple of weeks. The 
started unloading into this little outdoor kitchen back at base. And then halfway through doing that, he got a bit bored, so I went to go and check out the car park that he drove past on the way in here and found a key. Unfortunately, this van that it was for didn't have any gas. This red car had fuck all in it. There was some very handy fishing equipment that we found in the boot of this car. And then Stocky found another key just laying on the floor next to this blue car, which after filling up with some gas siphoned from the other cars, he managed to get it started and bring it back to base. Now, the reason he's gone for this car rather than the big blue van is because this is probably gonna be a bit of a better little run around because it's gonna be quieter than that hefty, noisy old truck, which is gonna mean that when out doing loot runs, less noise equals less attention. Now, with the afternoon already well underway, Stocky decided he'd just spend the rest of the day chilling out, sorting out his inventory, sticking it all in this outdoor kitchen and then getting to work on the water solution, which is gonna involve sticking a little bit of a roof above this room in preparation for building some water catching barrels that are gonna be plumbed into this sink. After a bit of early morning inventory management around the base, Stocky spent most of day 27 cutting logs, sawing them into planks, and then building walls and a big door out of those planks, just to give the front entrance of the country club a little bit more protection because there's a lot of broken windows or breakable windows and a big hole where a door used to be. So fuck it, yeah, let's just do the whole thing over again. On day 28, Stocky had finished off the wall that he'd begun building yesterday, and then he headed off into the woods to go and do a little bit of preparation for the future by crafting and placing a few traps to catch animals for food. Unfortunately, he made one crucial and critical mistake, which he had only come to realize later when he came to check the traps. Next, Stocky dug a few furrows in his little patch that was gonna become the farm eventually, ready for the very first potato seeds that he's gonna plant. That was quite enough manual labor for one day, so Stocky spent the rest of the evening scrounging around in the kitchen for any food and drink that he could gather because his supplies were running low. The water has been shut off already, although Stocky can't quite remember exactly when that happened. So the only fresh water that's available is what's already currently sitting in pipes, which means each sink in the building is gonna be good for a couple of bottle refills, and then that's it. So the sooner we can get those water barrels built up on the new roof that we're building above the pool kitchen, the better. Next morning, Stocky went to go check his traps to see if he'd caught any rabbits or anything like that. And that's exactly the moment when he realized his critical mistake that he hadn't had any bait. So unsure whether this would even work, Stocky tried adding some of the mixed vegetables that he found in the freezer yesterday to one or two of the traps just to see if that could entice any little critters. But again, he's gonna to have to return later, probably tomorrow, to see if this is even gonna work. Back at base, Stocky was still on a bit of a survival trip, so he decided to test out the fishing rod and tackle that he found in the car yesterday, and see if he could catch any fish in this little pond. This turned out to be probably one of the most unproductive days Stocky has spent in the apocalypse so far, fishing out mostly just socks, shoes, and absolute crap. But a miracle occurred, and he did catch three little tiny fish right at the end of the day. Maybe there's a lesson in there somewhere about the time of day that one should be fishing. Who knows? Either way, this did give Stocky the excuse to go and start his fireplace for the first time, because with the electricity cut off, none of the ovens are gonna work. So this is the only way he's gonna be able to cook those little tiddlers that he just plucked out of the pond. Next morning, it was time to go and plant another couple of potato seeds in the farm, 
just so that we can stagger the growth of these things. Because the thing is, if we plant them all at once and then we harvest them all at once, then it's likely that they're all gonna go off before we've had a chance to use them if we haven't got a refrigerator up and running by then. Now, one of the things that we need to do before we build those water barrels on top of our kitchen outside is get our carpentry skill to level seven. And something that's gonna help that is to go and disassemble as many wooden objects as possible. And it just happens that this little equestrian looking center over here has got a clubhouse with a whole bunch of tables, chairs, lounges, all that kind of thing. So I'm gonna try not to destroy the car on the way. And we're gonna head in. After making his way inside, looting a little bit of food out of the kitchen and then grabbing a couple of books off these shelves, Stocky went about destroying the place all in the name of personal development. Now, it was getting to be a bit of a pain in the ass having to go all the way upstairs just to go to sleep every night. So Stocky decided he was gonna to try to dismantle some of the beds and move one downstairs into the lounge. However, that didn't go quite to plan because when you dismantle one of these big double beds, it breaks down into potential four parts and there's no guarantee that you're gonna get all four parts when you destroy one bed. In this case, the first bed, we've got two parts. So we'd have to go and dismantle some similar beds until we got the two missing parts. And that was not on Stocky's side this time because after destroying all of the beds upstairs, we somehow managed to still be one part short. What does this mean? It means we're gonna be sleeping on the sofa until we can find that missing part from another similar bed in another house somewhere. All up, day 31 was not a great day because it was today that we realized that those mixed vegetables that we put in the traps didn't do fuck all. They didn't catch anything. So we're gonna to have to go and have a look, see if we can research what we should be putting in here. Maybe Stocky would have a bit more luck with a little bit of night fishing. But then again, maybe not. Now this carpentry situation has taken a little bit too long to get going, and mainly because we haven't read a skill book that's going to increase our XP gains. And it occurred to Stocky on the morning of day 32 that he may have left a carpentry book behind in the old house. So we took the long walk back through the golf course to go and see if there's any books that we'd left behind by mistake. But it turns out he hadn't got a carpentry book that he needed. So he grabbed what he did need, went back to the clubhouse and spent the rest of the day reading his trapping book. <laughs> 33 days into the apocalypse, and Stocky decided this was it, enough is enough. We're gonna to have to go out and find this magazine that's got the instructions on how to wire the generator into our mains. So remembering the Enigma bookstore up in Riverside, Stocky set out on what could be a very dangerous mission. Ooh, and I wonder if this little car crash situation might be important to the story later. Okay, we're getting close. This car really does sound awful. Yep, okay, here we go. Well, this looks like as good a place to stop as any. Let's equip our machete and hope that we can get some more one hit kills than what our crowbar is giving us. Okay, this is very dangerous because if we have to run, I don't know that that car is gonna start first time. <laughs> Let's make some space, make sure our back is clear. And let's do this.
Okay, car park clear. Let's, oh, no, it's not. All right, now let's see if we can sneak around the front. Oh, man, we're going to have to deal with these. We don't want them sneaking up behind us when we're in the shop trying to loot. Enigma books, here we come. Stocky spent the next couple of hours scouring the bookshelves for the one magazine that he needed, but ultimately that proved unsuccessful. It wasn't here, but so as not to make this a completely wasted trip, we did stock up on a few of the books that we know we're going to need in the immediate future, including the missing carpentry books from our collection, and then we headed back around to the car out back. Just as a bit of a bonus, there is a police station just on the way out of town here, so let's go have a look and see if we can get anything good out of there. Looks clear. Let's see if we can sneak in the front door. No. This is getting dangerous. We're on the verge of becoming exhausted. We're already tired. I don't know if this is a battle that we should be waging today. If we can get this engine started, then I think we're just going to call it a night and head back, assuming we have enough petrol to get us there. You see, I did assume that we'd be able to siphon some fuel from a couple of cars over here in the city, but that was unfruitful for all the ones that I did check off camera. So let's see how far we can get, otherwise we might be walking home through the forest. And wouldn't you believe it? Oh my god. Okay. Let's see if we have any energy left to try and clear out these few zombies and we can check these cars for fuel here as one last attempt. Okay, let's have a look. How lucky can we be? This would be the first one to have any fuel in it that we've checked today. Boy, do we need it. Yes. Oh my God, look at that. Unbelievable. All right, let's get this petrol the fuck out of this car and put it into this car. And let's go home. After a big day, an exhausting day yesterday, Half of day 34 was gone before Stocky saw any of it, so he decided to just spend a relaxing day doing a bit of inventory management. Stuck a couple of fish traps down in the pond outside. Went to go and check his other traps off in the forest, to no success. And he spent the evening reading a carpentry book in the dark, but either way it's going to help him get to that next level a lot quicker so he can get started working on those water barrels. Day 35 was mostly about building the wall, so Stocky spent most of it chopping trees and getting started working on that wall just on this southeastern edge of the compound. 
And then when it got to dusk, Stocky spent the last few hours of the day doing a bit of fishing to see what he could pluck out. Which turned out to be the square root of fuck all. On day 36, Stocky completed work on the first section of his wall, and in doing so it took him up to level 7 in carpentry, which is just what he needed to finally get these water barrels built up above the pool kitchen. And so with those in place now, all we need to do is plumb them into this sink below. And now we have a sustainable source of clean drinking water. Then after going to grab another couple of planks, Stocky built two more water barrels up on the roof and then began work on linking this structure to this window over here in the main building just to create an easy access point rather than having to go 100 miles around the houses to get up there from the inside. But then Stocky realised he wanted there to actually be a door here and he couldn't figure out how to get rid of the broken window. So he knocked a bit of wall down ready to put a door in there but that was going to be a job for another day because he was fucked and it was time to go to bed. And that's exactly what Stocky got a move on with the next day. First of all, boarding up the window. And then after dismantling a bunch of doors around the place to find some hinges and a doorknob, he stuck a door in. Now at this point, given how poorly Stocky's trapping and fishing is going, his biggest immediate problem is a lack of food. Not least because he's burned through all the perishable items and he's made a massive dent on all his canned goods. So our next adventure really needs to be to get out into the world and loot some more houses or maybe find a supermarket with some good food and supplies. So that's exactly what Stocky's gonna do tomorrow. He saw out the rest of day 37 doing a bit of gardening, planting and watering some more potato seeds. And then a little bit of furniture rearrangement, just moving some of the cabinets in from the storeroom into the little outside kitchen area, including a sink. Having two sinks next to each other like this just expands the area on the roof where we can place the water barrels. So it just means we can have a couple more. And then after a bit more work in the little storage area, he went to bed. Day 38 was going to be all about raiding the housing estate just south of the golf course because food supplies were getting very low. Trapping and fishing has been an unmitigated disaster so far. So we'll be back on the canned goods for a little while, but not before we re-clear this area that we've already cleared out a few days prior. Who knows where these zombies came from. So after clearing the zombies at the entrance to the little gated community here, we just checked a few kitchens, just loading up on as much as we could hold, and then we're not gonna have to refrigerate. Now whilst this little blue car did get us in and out of Riverside last episode, it turned out not to be the most reliable vehicle in the world. So on the way back to base, Stocky just stopped off at the car park again to go and transfer the fuel from Bluey into Big Bluey, which is this other van that we found the key for in the car park. And we're just going to have to bite the bullet on how loud this is going to be compared to the other blue car. And then back at base, after a little bit more inventory organisation, it was off to bed to recharge for a quite frustrating day tomorrow. Stocky's goal for day 39 should not have been an all day job, but it turned out that way. Basically because he doesn't read things properly. Because having three parts out of four of a big bed back at home, he headed over to find the missing part at the houses, but didn't realize they're all different types. So back he went, deconstructed a bunch more beds, took them back to base, and then came all the way back again because he realised instead of putting them in the back of the van, he dropped them on the floor. So finally, as the evening drew to a close, Stocky managed to get a nice big comfy bed down just in between the pool tables, up on the top level of the country club. 
Day 40 is the big one. We're heading back to Riverside to see if we can find that generator magazine. Also, we thought because just after we left the compound, the van totally conked out. So it was a long walk back to base. Unfortunately, a false start for today. We'd have to go again tomorrow. And so the only thing Stocky really achieved today was catching a couple of fish and then cooking them by the fire. All right, this is it, day 41. Stocky actually made it to Riverside. The plan of action for today was gonna to be to sneak into the school via the back entrance through the houses, rather than going in through the front door, which is gonna be way more busy in terms of zombies out in the street. So, let's see how that goes. Being an outdoorsman, I think this horrible rain actually gives Stocky the advantage because he's not affected by the weather, but there is a chance that it's gonna make the zombies have a harder time spotting him. Until Stocky wants them to, that is, of course. Okay, the school building is in sight. We're getting closer. Let's just cross our fingers and hope that what we want is actually gonna be here. Who knows why a school would actually have a generator instruction manual in their library, but it's the closest thing we've got to a chance. into the library we go. A couple of zombies in here to sort out and then we should have the freedom of the bookshelves. And there we go how to use generators. This really is a turning point for Stocky because it's gonna allow him to keep food refrigerated and frozen, which is gonna be important through the winter months when there's very little to grow and to catch. And we've even done it with a little bit of time left this afternoon. So after chilling out in the van to read the generator magazine for a little while, Stocky headed over to the gas station because without being overly presumptive, he did bring the generator along in the back of the van, just in case the best case scenario happened. And it has. So, let's see how much it might take to clear out this gas station and get the generator connected so that we can get these pumps going. Well, it's not a good sign that Stocky's already quite tired just from a long day. have to do this as carefully and methodically as we can. Stocky's even starting to get a bit gassed now as well as tired. This is not good, but they're nearly done. Okay, that was a pretty big effort. It definitely calls for a quick rest in the van. Okay, clear. Let's grab the Jenny. Stick it down here, get it connected.
to get a little bit of gas in there. And we're going to have to take a big risk right now and see if we can survive the night sleeping in the van. Hopefully, we've done a good enough job of clearing the place out. Day 42, we're alive. We survived the night in the van. So let's bring it over to the gas pumps, get this shit turned on and fill up. Now we only have one bread gas can to fill up at the moment because we left the others in the black van that broke down. So after we kill a few zombies here, we might have to go and have a look and see what else we can find to fill up with gas and take home. And look at that, wouldn't you believe it? Just like fucking buses, two come along at once. Okay, there's quite a lot of zombies protecting relatively few cars, but we have got time. Nothing in that car. Ooh, one empty gas can in this one. But this was all very exhausting for Stocky, so he went and filled that gas can up and then headed home. There's definitely unfinished business back at the gas station in Riverside. So Stocky spent most of day 43 just laying around reading books, cooking food, eating, and just resting and recovering, ready for another big day tomorrow. He did a few more chores, a bit more organizing, Went to check on his potatoes, which are coming along very nicely. They should be ready to harvest pretty soon. And then he tucked in for a very early one with a good book at 4.30 p.m. Good on you, Stocky. Here we go, day 44, back at Riverside We'll get this generator connected again, and then we'll see if we can fill up those gas cans that we brought with us this time. But not before clearing out the warehouse car park that we started on a couple of days ago to see if we can find any more gas cans. Absolutely relentless. Again, by mid-morning, Stocky was knackered, so he had a little sit-down. Okay, back at it. But no gas can here. Nor here. But, good news, we did find one empty gas can in this white van. Now let's see if we can get in the warehouse for an extra bonus. This really is exhausting work. And do you know what? Let's err on the side of safety and come back for the warehouse another day. Let's just complete our main objective for today and get that gas. 
Although saying that, it does look pretty clear around this auto shop. Should we see if we can get in there? Okay, it's clear. Fuck. Well, if we weren't gonna stay around for the warehouse, I'd be fucked if I'm dealing with the alarm in a place I didn't really wanna go anyway. Although, Let's just have a look how many zombies are actually making their way up there. Does... yeah, I don't know. Does look like a few. How close can we get without being overwhelmed? Nah, fuck it. Let's not distract them from their path. At least if we know they're all going up there, then we know they're there. So let's just deal with them later. Right, here we are back at base. Time to get this generator connected to the house. Turn it on. And hey presto, we have power. Now here's something cool that I didn't mention at the time, but we did pick up a popsicle freezer from the garage. So let's just pop that down on the floor and now we have extra freezer storage. And so, day 45, the cycle repeats. We're back on construction. First, we're gonna be chopping down a fuckload of trees. And then we're gonna bring them up here and build a wall. Day 46, much of the same, but with a little bit of fishing sprinkled in in between. Now, even though we were pretty close, it was getting to be a bit of a pain in the ass going back and forth between the cupboard where I stored all my fishing shit. So we put a box from the storage room over here right next to the pond. And that just saves us a few footsteps. But with that said, it wasn't long until we're back on the lumber. interspersed with short rests on this lovely wooden bench. Day 47, Stocky treated himself to a lovely fish breakfast. Which put him right in the mood for a bit more fishing. What he was getting pretty sick of by now was chopping fucking trees. So having had enough of that, Stocky went home, cooked some fish and then chucked them in the freezer. Now with all the log walls that Stocky's been building over the past few days, he's run out of rags that tie them all together. So, we did remember seeing a big bunch of zombies down here on the main road on the way back from Riverside a couple of days ago, so off he went to go and kill as many of them as he can and steal their clothes. Yep, 
Yeah, this is actually quite a lot. Okay, let's bring it. Fucking hell. I don't know if this is going to happen. Okay, time for a quick bite to eat. This is too much. We're just going to have to make a run for the van and hope it can fucking start. Come on. Yes. Have some of that. We're not doing the van any favours, but it is better than the alternative, which is returning from here with absolutely nothing for our effort. Having slain the last zombie, Stocky went around grabbing all the clothes and tearing them up into rags so that he could get back to base and use those rags to tie some more walls together. How secure these walls are going to be, knowing that they're made from deteriorated old bits of zombie rag, I do not know, but it's got to be better than nothing, right? So after a quick check around the back in the car park here, which Stocky realised he hasn't actually had a look at for a few days, just to make sure that it was still clear. He went back, did a bit of fishing, see if he could get himself any supper. And then having just placed this thing, Stocky realized that it's actually using up gas in the generator a bit unnecessarily because we haven't got the food that's gonna require that much freezer space for now. So he took it apart, confirmed that it was no longer drawing power and then he realised at some point in the past day or two, Stocky had actually crossed the 1,000 zombies killed milestone. So, rather satisfied with himself, he went to bed. Stocky spent day 49 of the apocalypse just chopping a few trees so he could finish the wall over by the tennis courts. And he spent the rest of the day just pottering around with inventory, not doing an awful lot. And then day 50 was the big one. We're off to Riverside to go and check out the police station, which we didn't manage to get into last time. Not that we're planning on using guns a lot, but it's going to be good to have some just in case. So let's get in there and see what we can find. Car park's clear. Let's check around front. And the police station is ours. Let's see what goodies we can pick up. We are finding a lot of pistols, but stock is not much of a marksman, so I think if and when we come to try and train our gun skills, we're gonna have to go with a shotgun because apparently that gun is going to give us the least chance of missing our targets and to gain XP we need to hit our targets so it kind of makes sense all right let's dump this in the back of the van and see if there's anything over at the gas station just across the road clear again or not stock is getting a bit gassed so after he's dispatched this lot he's gonna have to take a quick rest before heading back to the gas station I think
Look at this, best haul of cigarettes and lighters so far. Some long lasting food, which depending on how our trapping and fishing goes over the next couple of weeks and months, may become very important. After clearing the gas station, Stocky proceeded to clear up a few of the zombies just hanging around because it's getting late and there's not really enough time to go and head over to the video store before nightfall. So we're going to have to risk spending a night in the van. And the fewer zombies that are around for that, the better. Day 51 and having had a few hours of shut-eye in the van overnight, Stocky proceeded to head over to the video store. And we are clear. Check these shells out, absolutely stocked to the brim. Luckily these video cassettes don't weigh very much, so I think we can probably just scoop them all up and stick them in our bag without any encumbrance issues. There's quite a few entertainment videos here, but the ones that we're really here for are the ones that are gonna help us level up our skills, just like how the Life and Living TV station does in the early days of the apocalypse. Okay, that's done. Let's just head back now and uh, not try and push our luck. It's been a pretty successful loot run so far this past couple of days. Having made it back to base with all of his swag, Stocky decided he needed to get a little bit more organized. So he started moving a bit of furniture around, taking this bookshelf from downstairs in the lounge and bringing it up to the main area of the base. And he continued doing that, bringing up a couple more bookshelves from downstairs until day 52. When he turned the light on and realized that he doesn't like these toilet doors just being right here in the base. So he started moving a bit of stuff around to see if we can cover those doors up and just basically hide them away. That's not bad. Then so that he could sit and watch all of his videos in the comfort of his base, he went and grabbed a TV and a unit from one of the hotel rooms. Then he just rearranged a little bit of the furniture just to make the Feng Shui work a little bit better. We'll revisit this particular configuration a little bit later in the episode, but Stocky did like the way these pool tables act as a good display unit for all of his guns. Next he grabbed a set of drawers from one of the hotel rooms and chucked all of his ammunition in there. And what good is a TV without a sofa to sit on to sit and watch it? So here's one courtesy of the lounge from downstairs. From here, Stocky expanded on his water barrel operation, laying down some more floor and just building another couple of barrels to connect to the sinks downstairs. Back inside, a little bit more organization of guns and ammunition. And then finally, it was time to sit down and watch a bit of TV. Day 53 was pretty chill, Stocky spent the morning reading a book, then he got out and harvested his potatoes, which, because he'd let them go to seed, provided some seeds that he can then replant. And 
And now with those potatoes that he just harvested, he actually had something that he can bait the traps with up in the forest. And now here's one of the added benefits of having the farm so close to this swimming pool here is that we've basically got infinite water that we can just refill from to water our crops. Day 54, Stocky headed over to his traps to see if anything had been caught in them overnight. And he found three dead rabbits. Back in the kitchen, he went about butchering them to see how much meat they produced. And that is a lot of nutritional value, considering it only cost us a part of one potato to catch that rabbit. Let's see what they look like cooked. I don't know, that looks pretty good. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that we could probably survive on one rabbit every two days. So as long as there's going to be rabbits in the winter, and as long as we can grow and freeze enough potatoes until then, I think we're going to be set up for food for life. With that said, just in case the rabbits aren't hanging around in the winter, I think we should catch as many as we can while the going is good. All right, so on that subject, let's get some more potatoes planted. Day 55, another trap check, another three rabbits. Nice one, stocky. Fishing, I'm no longer such a fan of because fish are really heavy compared to the rabbits. So I think we'll sack that off because they're gonna to take too much space in the freezer. Day 56 was another one just sort of milling around really. Stocky headed over to the car park around the back to go and retrieve a car that had a key. The engine is in slightly better condition than the blue van that we've been using recently. And then because Stocky had been getting in the mood for getting his cook on, he went back to the housing estate over near the golf course yet again, but this time to go and see if he could find any pots and pans that he can create stir fries and whatnot with. And then day 57, it was time to head over to the farming and rural supply store during what's possibly the most disgusting weather conditions that Stocky has ever seen. Okay, we're here, let's park out back. And it looks like we're gonna to have to do the obligatory tidy up of the car park. This is too many, let's see if we can lose them. Okay, that's done the trick, I think. Quick look in here. Nothing really very useful. Car park seems clear from what I can see here. All right, before we head in, I think we left some bags in the car so that we can use them to just bundle our loot in. I was wrong. We have nothing. Except a bunch more zombies to kill now. Okay, we're clear. Let's get in. Alright, this is what I'm talking about. Heaps of seeds. When we're talking about long-term, self-sufficient survival, this is what it's all about. Wow, this is more seeds than we're ever going to be able to use, but we're going to grab them anyway. I don't know what some of this is, but we'll take it, just in case. Let's get around the back where the really good stuff is, i.e. the guns. We can crowbar this door open. Here we 
you go, the mother load. Thank you very much. This is way more than we can carry right now, so we're going to have to go and dump some off in the car. Okay, we'll try that again. Oh, and it's fucked off anyway. Nice. Oh no, there's four more. space in the boot in this car so Stocky has to use the back seats to dump all of his guns and ammunition and seeds. And then he heads back in for round two of the clear up. Who's that knocking on the door? Having hoovered up the last little bit of loot from the farming and rural supply store, stop you headed home. With this torrential rain that we've been having today, Stocky figured that it would be a good opportunity to go and plant some seeds without having to water them immediately afterwards. So, that's exactly what he did. With that done, it was time to properly sort out all of the loot first separating all of the farm stuff and sticking it in this box outside and then back indoors we went about rearranging all the guns and ammo. Speaking of ammo, this set of drawers is getting full already so we're going to have to do something about that but not before we moved the pool table because Stucky didn't like it where it was just there. The window for some reason was getting in the way. Anyway, day 58. Stocky went and grabbed some cupboards from just next door in the little cafe to expand his ammo storage. Then he continued organizing everything and just laying it all out in a nice little display. At this stage, Stocky was in possession of three important things. Fresh meat, fresh veggies, and a bunch of frying pans to cook it all in. So, he spent the afternoon chopping it all together and coming up with a bunch of rando stir fries. And it was with these meals that Stocky got a little glimpse into the future of what life is gonna be like living out here on the golf course, growing veggies, catching animals, and most importantly, surviving. But if that's gonna be the way, Stucky needed to keep on top of his garden, not letting it get out of hand and overgrown. So he spent a couple of hours doing a bit of maintenance and tidy up around the place. That looks much nicer, Stocky. Well done, mate. And then back upstairs, just before he retired for the evening, he took a little look around and realized quite how far he'd come. The base was coming along nicely. We've got a food production line. We've got books, we've got TV, we've got protection, we've got four walls and a roof. What more can a man want?
Day 59 in Stocky at Mickwell's adventure. Started off with a little bit of base work. Then he started work on studying towards one of his long-term goals, which is to be able to maintain his own vehicles. So he read a book. Grabbed episode one of Car Zone, which he picked up in the video store the other day. And he spent the afternoon just chilling by the TV. Later in the evening, he went to place a few more traps down to catch rabbits for food. And then he was back on the books for the rest of the night. It was much of the same on day 60, heading out first thing to pick up the rabbits that he'd caught in his new traps. And then it was time for another episode of Car Zone. Stocky closed out the day, chopping down a couple of trees so that he had something to build the rest of the perimeter fence with. And on day 61, he began work on finishing that off. It was getting late by now, so Stocky spent the rest of the evening just chopping trees down, ready for day 62, when he headed out first thing to try and finish off the northwest corner. Unfortunately, nails were in very short supply, so he wasn't able to quite finish the job this time, so he spent the evening just digging a few more furrows to plant some seeds. And then day 63, he remembered a little maintenance building over in the middle of the golf course. One box of nails would do it, but there were none to be found. Now Stocky did know where he was likely to find a lot of nails. It was going to be dangerous, it was going to be a bit of a mission. It seems like high risk for not a lot of reward, but it was going to have to be done. So that's what he did on day 64. This storage facility was the first place that came to mind when Stocky was trying to think of where he might find these nails. Just had a little bit of clearing out to do first and then he could get in to those garages. And then the very first one he went in, he wished he hadn't. Now luckily, this whole place is fenced off, so the only way any zombies are going to get in here is through this gate. So this is not a total disaster, but we do still need to be careful. Let's give Stocky some distance and then we can assess from afar. So there is quite a range on the sound of those damn alarms. We are going to have somewhat of a mess to clear up. Okay, that's the first lot that were just following us because of the sound of our engine. Let's see if we can approach quietly and incognito and assess the damage. Yep, just as we thought, more zombies than we hear a minute ago. Stocky son, swat him. Oh, we haven't even got back into the place yet. Okay, I think we are clear. Stock is a bit knackered, so it's probably a good idea to have a little bit of a sleep. Refreshed from his afternoon nap, Stocky brought the car inside. He had a couple more zombies to kill. 
And then the loot was quite disappointing, to be honest. There was not a single box of nails in any of these garages. I did find a little bit of fishing gear, so that'll come in handy, maybe. And it turns out we had one box of nails on this random ute just stuck, broken down in the yard, and then a sledgehammer as well. So we'll take that. That'll come in handy later on today. But it wasn't all bad because we have found another generator and we'll use that to stick at the petrol station so that we don't have to take our one from home to go and power that place up every time we want to refill. So we can just leave that there and wouldn't you know it, we just found another one as well. So we have three generators in our possession, but it's getting late, stock is getting tired and we haven't finished looting yet. So let's stop here overnight. Carry on on day 65. Now on theme with yesterday, there was fuck all loot in the rest of those garages. So Stocky headed up to the garage to go and try and get that generator down, only to find a fuck ton of zombies all migrating to the west, which I assume is because of that gunfire we heard. If we have one thing going for us right now, I think the fog might actually be helping because it is going to shield us a little bit from the zombies view. So with that said, let's see how many we can clear up and see if we can get access to the garage. And I think this situation warrants getting the old machete out. Okay, I think we are clear. Let's get the generator, stick it down, plug it in, grab a little bit of gas out of the car so that we can power the generator, turn it on, get the gas pumps going. We filled up a few gas cans from the car and then we had to switch it around because the bloody nozzle is on the other side. <laughs> Here we go. I think we just about got away with it. Now it's still early in the day, so let's swing by the warehouse down here and see if this is going to be worth taking on. I don't know. We've met today's objective, we've got our nails. Let's call it here and we'll come back another day to get the warehouse. Let's get back to base, finish off the fence. And there we have it. One secure base. So after a big day, Stocky didn't feel like doing much on day 66, so he just spent most of it tying the place up. Grabbed a couple of deck chairs and a table from the pool to stack up on the balcony up here. Grabbed a couple of pot plants from elsewhere in the country club. And just added a little bit of world building decor. Back inside, Stocky decided to shut this area off, building a wall, mainly so that we could have another couple of cabinets up here because he did pick up these drinks cabinets from downstairs in the ballroom, which when filled up with booze, look awesome. Day 67, after an easy one yesterday back at base, it was time to get back over to the warehouse and see what we might find. clear we were free to bring the car around and when I say clear I never really mean clear anyway let's get in this one first and here we go the mother load these boxes are all going to be filled with tools equipment resources basically everything and anything stock you might need in terms of crafting and construction for the foreseeable future so after a bit of a look around grabbing the easy stuff went out to go and clear a path to the car so he could bring the car inside and just load up. Now looting all these boxes is not quick work and it's getting late so Stocker decided to shut himself in and spend the night looting and loading up the car, grabbing all the stuff he thinks he might need. 
with a special emphasis actually on metal work because he wants to spend a bit of time building that skill so that he can actually maintain and repair his cars and also give himself something to do over the winter. Wood glue is important for repairing tools. That's something that's been very scarce up until now. You never know when a snow shovel might come in handy. Although I've got a suspicious feeling I know when. So, day 68. A short drive across the car park to another smaller warehouse. Fire these knobheads. More of the same. Killing zombies. Opening garages. Having a look in boxes. And just grabbing all the good shit. Then as if by some divine reminder why it's a good idea to work on your mechanic skills. Stocky got a flat on the way home. But that was enough action for today. Stocky spent the evening just relaxing, planting some more seeds, making the most of the rain again so that he doesn't have to bother water in this ship. And then Stocky went on a bit of a wild goose chase, checking all the cars in the car park at the country club to try and find a jack that he thought he'd seen somewhere. So if he's gonna put a new tire on the car, then he's gonna need one. But, for some reason, God knows where he thought he saw it. It wasn't in the cars, it wasn't in the cupboards at home. He's gonna to have to go and find another one. But that'll be a task for another day because he spent the rest of today working on his electronic skill. Because one point in electronics, plus the skill points that he's already got in mechanics, means that he can hotwire cars. And then day 70 is the day when he got that point. So Stocky only needs to be armed with a screwdriver and a can of gas. And he can head out and basically take any car he wishes. The first one he went for was this white one in the car park of the country club. It's a bit of a doppelganger for his pimp mobile he's been driving around recently. Now excited for his new mechanic and hot wiring skills, Stocky got a bit of a flavour for the idea of building a little bit of a workshop back at base so that he can give himself a space to work on cars and practice his skills and just pass the time over the winter. So the morning of day 71 he went back over to the storage facility to go and grab that other generator that he found. But before he got that far he had his eye on this little black van as well which has got a lot better storage than the white car. Unfortunately had to smash the window to get in because the doors were locked but once in he was able to hotwire it, and now the A-Team van was Stocky's. He quite liked the look of this little tool chest as well, so he grabbed that, chucked it in the back of the van, and then went back to get the generator. Now with all this gear that he's been picking up the last couple of days, there's just one more thing that Stocky needs to acquire, and that is the car jack we spoke about a minute ago. Luckily there was an auto body shop just across the road from the warehouses and we know for a fact that there's no alarm on this because we've already tripped it a few days ago. When it was time to get a looting, Stocky was shocked to find just one Jack in this whole place. But in the words of Jack Black, one is all you need. Anyway, Stocky carried on clearing out the place of anything that he might need later and then headed back over to the warehouse because the van was half empty and there was plenty more shit to pick up over here. So with the van full of goods, he headed back home to base and this time he went around the back. Because the idea that he had for his little car workshop involves the ballroom of the country club, which is just the other side of this wall here. However, he had to stick a generator down in a bit of a weird position to get it close enough to the light switch of this, uh, this big ballroom. But having it up on the balcony there did the trick. And this is it. Welcome to the new workshop. Doesn't look like much yet, but we'll soon change that, starting now on day 72. First things first, we had to knock a hole in the wall. 
And then we killed two birds with one stone, chopping down a few of the overgrown trees that have started popping up, using the wood to build a double door. Maneuvered these first couple of vans into position. Got our first little bit of storage down and then we started filling it up with all the crap that we brought back from the warehouse. Day 73, bit of a cruisy one again, reading some books, doing some farming, harvesting more cabbages than I know what to do with quite frankly. Then hot wiring our first car from the Country Club car park. This is gonna be a bit of a practice vehicle to build Stocky's mechanic skill on. I don't know how we're gonna get out of here after we've fucked it up to be honest, but there we go, day 74. Stocky dressed apart in his overalls to get going training his mechanics. And then because the rain still hasn't fucking stopped, he decided to make the most of it again and plant some more crops. Now it's been a long few days for Stocky and he deserved a little bit of downtime. So he grabbed a bottle of bourbon, chugged the whole thing, and then he fell asleep in front of the TV. It's been 75 long, long days since Stocky Mickwell's survival story began. And here he is, look, killing his first little zombie. How cute. Fast forward to day 75. Stocky secured the country club over at the golf course, walled the whole thing off, and he's getting busy with construction, making the place his very own. In fact, this bit was quite tedious and stretched into day 76 as well. After all that woodwork, Stocky felt like a bit of a change of scenery so he spent the rest of the afternoon and evening working on his cars. However, the more he progressed his mechanic skills, the more he realized that they're probably not gonna be as useful as he would want without the accompanying metalwork skills. So he headed back over on day 77 to Riverside School to see if he could find any books that are gonna help him learn all that shit, but to no avail. Surely he would have better luck at the bookstore back in town. He just had to get past one small obstacle. And Stocky's effort was well rewarded when he found a full set of metalworking books in the bookstore. Now, one of the things that I, I mean, Stocky learned about recently was the ability to tow vehicles. So he thought he'd give it a go and see if we could pick up this white ute that he's had his eye on for a little while. And hey presto, what do you know? Stocky spent most of day 78 reading books, doing a bit of farming. Practicing his metal work. And if you want to try for a tedious skill to try and level up, this is the one. So having heard enough of that, Stocky spent day 79 just working on the cars in the workshop. Day 80 was back on the metalwork. Day 81 was back on the metalwork. And then fighting the urge to end it all right now after two days of metalwork, he decided to add some little improvements around the base with some ropes that he could get up and down from the workshop from the main area of the base. That'll do for now. We'll come back and sort something out a little bit more permanent later.
Now, those of you watching from the start will know that we've picked up quite a lot of guns and ammunition over the last 82 days, but Stocky sucked at shooting, so he grabbed a shotgun and a bunch of shells and started blasting away. Turns out that if you're shit at using guns, the shotgun is the way that you can level up fast because apparently, Stocky hasn't checked this, but he has heard that skill is gained for every bullet or every buckshot that connects with a zombie. So with the shotgun having a wide spread, you basically gain four times the opportunity to upskill. Having said that, don't quote me on it because it might be bullshit. Either way, the shotgun is a really fun way to get into using guns. It also took Stocky a while to realize that if he stands still, then those outlines around the zombies would turn green which means he's got a better aim. So better late than never with that little tidbit of information, we got there in the end. Oh, and if you don't like shooting montages, then you can probably skip forward about two and a half minutes. And it was about now that Stocky ran out of shotgun shells, so he headed back home to go and pick up some more, probably had two or three more boxes in the cupboard, and vowed to come back in the morning and finish this bunch of bastards off. And here he goes. all the zombies from south of the country club so we headed up to the spot in between the warehouse and riverside to go and see if we could find some more and we weren't disappointed now the shotgun is all fun and games but let's give it a little go with something else we did bring a pistol with us as well so let's, uh, let's see how that fares Not as impressive as a shotgun, I have to say. Sped up, it looks pretty cool though. Anyway, that's enough of that. On the way back home, I thought I'd just show you this bit where we picked up the trailer from this car wreck, because that will come in handy for a loot run that we're going to do soon, as well as humping logs around the base. Speaking of which, it was another day on the construction for Stocky sick of all the weeds growing in this area where he's walking all the time he's stuck some floorboards down 
day 85, he spent pretty much all day fucking cooking. I mean, it's good that we've got the resources and that we can do this, but my God, does it take a long time. Stir fry is being probably the easiest thing to put together because you can just chuck anything in a frying pan and it will call it a stir fry. And frying pans have been pretty plentiful. Day 86 was another day spent mostly farming. And working in the ballroom workshop. On his recent run to the school and the bookstore in Riverside, Stocky did drive past a couple of survivor houses, so he headed back over to see if he could find them again. Unfortunately, only finding this one. But it turned out that one is all you need, because what you found in this one was pretty, pretty good. Check it out, we have a new machete. Thank you very much. Now, that was great and all, but the main mission for today was to get over to the Gigamart and see if we could fill up this trailer full of all the canned goods and non-perishables. Only problem is, it was a little bit more populated than Stocky was expecting. It might not look like it now, but with his newfound gun skills, he got a little bit cocky and made a little bit of a boo-boo. Yes, that is every zombie and a fuck knows how large radius. All attracted to the sound of this little pea shooter that Stocky thinks he can take the crowds on with. Not the most genius idea he's ever had. But all is not lost, it's just going to be a case of running them around. Oh my god. Good fucking Pied Piper. Yeah, we just got to get them in a place where they're not going to bother us for long enough that we can raid the Gigamart. So, just up here in town looks like a good spot. And that did work well enough to thin the crowds out enough that we could get by clearing the rest out with this new machete that we found just minutes earlier. So with that, a new police helmet and the entire contents of the Gigamart were ours. Back at base, day 88, yet more farming, planting some seeds this time to make the most of the rainfall so we don't have to bother watering the fucking things. And then again, back in the workshop, this time not to practice our skills, but to fix up our favorite yellow van. Just buffing the dents and scratches out of there. Lovely job. More random jobs on day 89, including first thing, going to pick up this uh, this black shitty van that conked out on us the other day. However, we realised that the taxi couldn't pull it, so we had to go the other way around. And then once we got back home, we used the van to pull this shitty old blue van out of the workshop, because there's no way it was driving itself in that condition. And then with all the spare bits of bullshit and parts and everything that we've gathered, it was time to try and get a little bit of order to the place. Day 90, more base work. This time creating a bit of a wooden road so that we can actually get to and from the workshop with any cars that we pick up without having to go over the shitty grass that's going to get overgrown before long. Day 91, not the most exciting day, just crafting and setting a few more traps. 
and then day 92, Stocky decided to head out to this trailer park because with all the fun he was having the other day with a shotgun, he ran out of shells. So thinking that perhaps some of these places would have some shotgun shells in the bedside cabinet and all that, he headed over and tried to find some, but it was all to no avail. However, again, Stocky got extremely lucky after almost getting extremely unlucky. Check this out. Very fucking tight little corner there to <laughs> try and open the door and run out. But we have a zombie with a katana sticking out of his guts. And that is going to do us very nicely. Thank you very much. Katana in hand. Stocky went back over to Riverside to continue on with his hunt for some shotgun shells. I enjoyed that one. But again, looking in houses, trying to find shotgun shells just randomly, it was not time well spent. So Stocky decided to have a little bit more fun with the katana and went back over to the town centre. Plenty of kills, but no shotgun shells, unfortunately. However, the good news was that Stocky stumbled across this perfect looking ambulance on the way home and it was parked right outside this clothing store. So Stocky grabbed a few supplies for winter, hot wired the ambo and then hooked it up to the van that he drove over here with and then towed it all home. Back at home Stocky got washed up and then tried on all his new clothes and he's not looking too bad even though he says so himself. Not much to do on day 94, just another trap check and then stick some more bait in them. And then yet more cooking and chopping and chopping and cooking back in the kitchen. Day 95, Stocky for some reason forgot how to drive or at least stop anyway. And then the fucking idiot did it again. Figuring that he was in such a destructive mood, he decided to go and chop down a bunch of trees ready for some more construction. Namely, this wooden road that he's building. That continued into the shitty weather on day 96, but he had to get the job done. He figured he'd started, so he's got to finish. Then with a bunch of logs left over, he decided to put in a little bit more of a permanent fixture for accessing the top of the base from the workshop and vice versa. And then it occurred to Stoppy, I wonder if he can get up on the roof. And the answer was yes. Check it out. Not quite sure what we can do up here, but it's good knowing that we can. Now, let's see if we can get all the way up to the top of the roof over the ballroom and the workshop now. And again, victory. Now, as far as goals for Stocky's apocalypse adventure go, a safe and self-sustaining base was pretty much top of the list. And that really has been achieved now. We've walled the whole thing off. Stocky can grow and trap as much food as he's ever going to need. So to really set himself up for the long haul, Stocky filled up all his empty gas cans and then went over to the other gas station over in Riverside to go and pick up this chest freezer, which is just going to give him a little bit more capacity back at base for all of his crops and all of his rabbits that he's been catching. And then one final mission after clearing out these zombies One final mission that Stocky assigned himself was to clear out the Lickety Split. I 
don't know how many bottles of booze that was, but if it doesn't last the winter, then someone's got a problem. I mean, we couldn't even fit it in all the alcohol cabinets, so we had to put it all on the alcohol cabinets. On day 99, Stocky started to settle into the routine that was going to be his routine for the foreseeable future, having everything here that he really is ever going to need for long-term survival. Stocky's story from this point is going to be about farming, trapping, cooking, eating, drinking, cooking, eating, cooking, drinking, eating, drinking. I don't know about you, but that sounds alright to me. Maybe a little bit of my subconscious has kind of crept through into Stocky's situation. Or maybe there's just a little bit of everybody in Stocky. If you've watched this series all the way through to the end right now, then I think maybe just maybe you can identify, even just a little bit. So as Stocky approaches day 100, which just happens to bring with it the first snow of winter, a stark reminder of how bad the situation could have been if Stocky hadn't have planned ahead and given himself this great chance of survival. Let me say thank you for watching. I really hope that you've enjoyed Stocky's adventure as much as I've enjoyed channeling him through my mouse and keyboard. This was my first Project Zomboid series, so if you enjoyed it, please do let me know. These videos are a lot more time consuming than the regular seven days to die videos that I've been publishing up until now on the channel. So hopefully all the effort was worth it. I really appreciate all the time that you've put into this too by watching these videos. But at this point, all that's left for me to say from Stocky Mickwell and from me, King of the Zeds, is thanks for watching, stay safe and have a good apocalypse.